Hey everyone, Mr. MC here. This is a guide for round three of the 2021-2022 Nations Cup exhibition season taking place at Interlagos with the Super Formula. Who's Rem? Anyways, so the Toyota and the Honda Super Formula can be used here. They both perform the same, so choose whichever one you like more. Brake balance is all the way to the back at plus five to try to get this thing to turn, especially in the lower speed corners. So go ahead and bring yourself towards the right side of the track and you're braking just as you're about to reach the 50 meter board. So brake as much as you can and slowly ease off of the brakes as you turn in, but bring yourself all the way to the left side of the track because you're going to go down the center S's at full throttle. Take advantage of the curves as you're still within track limits and stick to the left curb to try to get through this turn a little faster. Bring yourself towards the right side of the track and you're braking just after you pass this path that is on the right. So brake hard for a short moment, quickly ease off of the brakes as you turn in, get on the throttle as soon as you can. It's pretty much all about trusting the downforce as it'll carry you through these turns really fast. Then as you reach the 50 meter board, you want to use just a tad bit of braking to fine tune the car's direction. Then just as this tire mark starts, that's when you want to start to fully brake. So brake as much as you can, take advantage of the curves. You can briefly go down to first gear for a bit more rotation, but make sure you exit the turn on second gear and be patient with the throttle input because these hairpins make it really easy for you to spin out. Then as you reach the black sign, start to brake. You can brake just a tad bit earlier than I do to try to get closer to the curves. Be really careful on the throttle. Take this left turn flat out. And for the final braking point, you're braking just as the grass on the right turns green. So this is just before the 50 meter board. You can briefly go down to second gear for a bit more rotation, but make sure you exit the final turn on third gear. And that is pretty much it for the lap guide. Before I go over to the qualifying section of the guide, I do want to let you know that make sure you bind the overtake feature to a button because you will be using that in this race. So from the home screen, press the GT button, go to options, controllers, choose the input that you use. So for me, I use the Logitech G923 and go ahead and assign a button because by default, overtake feature is not assigned to anything. So you want to make sure that you assign it click OK and you're good to go. But anyways, going over to the qualifying strategy. So you have five minutes to try to get the best qualifying time possible. So you'll get around two to three chances. Overtake feature is turned on here. So you want to make sure that you use it during your qualifying laps. So don't use it on your outlap unless if you're going through the final corner. And with the overtake feature, what it does it gives your engine more power, so basically you accelerate even faster. So you'll see me use that once we go over to the final corner. So just after it, that's when I start to use it. And make sure you use it wisely because you have a finite amount in the qualifying session. So once you're out, you're out. And basically just use it through the high speed sections of the track. So as soon as the Senate S's end, that's when I'll start to use it. You want to basically use as much of it as you can to try to squeeze out as much time as possible. So just after these send S's, I go flat out and use the overtake feature. Also, just make sure that you qualify alone, qualify far away from everyone else because the last thing you want to do is end up behind someone because you will be engaging with a dirty air and it'll make your car understeer a lot more. So it'll be a lot harder to go through these turns at your usual speeds, especially with the overtake feature if you're behind someone and your qualifying lap will be ruined. So just qualify far away from everyone else. It'll save you from a headache. So even through here, just using a bit of the overtake feature, just trying to use as much of it as I can to try to squeeze out as much time as I can, especially because I recorded this just after the manufacturer race. so. Uh, this race is kind of a warm up for me, but this kind of gives you an idea about how to go about this qualifying session. 
just qualify alone, far away from everyone else, and use the overtake feature during your qualifying laps to try to squeeze out as much time as possible. And hopefully you can get your best qualifying lap during your first qualifying lap because that's when you have 100% of the overtake feature, so you won't have to worry about running out of it because, yeah, eventually you will run out of it, and after that you'll be done, there won't be any more, but luckily this will replenish when we enter the race, so don't worry about saving it for the race, it will refill when you go over to the race, so at the end of the day, two to three chances to try to get the best qualifying time possible, and don't forget to use the overtake feature in the qualifying. But anyways, let's go on over to the race strategies, and this race is a grid start, so make sure you have the track control at one, and either shortly after the race starts or after you go through the Senna S's, you can then bring it back down to zero or whatever value you normally have it set to. And I say that because with the Super Formula cars, they generate a lot of wheel spin on the grid starts and you have cold tires at the start of the race, which means that you'll get even more wheel spin, which increases the risk of spinning out. So you just want to be really careful and make sure that the car is already moving and you're not getting any wheel spin before you turn the traction control off or move it to whatever value you normally have it set to. But anyways, we're doing 20 laps at Interlagos with the Super Formulas, and this is with both the Honda and the Toyota Super Formulas. As I said earlier, they both perform the same, so choose whichever one you like more or whichever one has the better livery. But Fio is a times three, so Fio is actually an issue, but you don't need to do too much fuel saving so you don't have to refuel. The tire is a times nine, and you have both the racing soft and medium tires that are required to be used, so you do need to use both tire compounds so you don't get a one minute penalty after the race ends. In terms of which tires to start on, if you're starting in the very front, start on the racing soft tires to try to get away from everyone else, and if you're starting anywhere close to the middle or the back of the pack, start on the racing medium tires because of the dirty air. It's going to make it really hard to do any sort of overtaking, so you might as well start on the worst tire compound. Now, in terms of fuel saving, because you want to do that, you want to basically just do a bit of short shifting, so starting right around here, so just before turn six, all the way to just after turn 10, so it's the very last hairpin. That's where you want to do your short shifting, so shifting earlier than usual, It'll help you save a bit of tire life because tire wear is a massive issue. And you also want to save fuel so you don't have to do a splash and dash. I think going flat out, you have about 19 laps worth of fuel in which it's really close to 20 laps. So you might as well do a bit of short shifting so you don't have to refuel because even just spending a second to refuel can make a huge difference in your race. But basically going through the main straight and then the quote unquote back straights, you can shift right around the 100% mark. You can even probably get away with shifting just a little bit earlier than usual. So just going through the set of S's, going through here, I'm shifting at 100%, revving it out a little bit, but I would try not to rev it out too much because that does use up a lot more fuel. So you're trying to use 5% of fuel per lap. So kind of an easy number to remember. So after each lap, you want to be at a multiple of five. So as you see me doing it right now, I'm doing a bit of short shifting, keeping an eye on the feel because I want to make sure that I don't run out of feel before I cross the finish line because that will be a bit embarrassing if that does happen. And in terms of the tire wear, tire wear, massive issue. You want to take good care of them because once the tire wear starts to kick in, it becomes a massive pain in the behind to drive, especially as you go through the hairpins. Those hairpins can make it really easy for the Super Formula to want to spin out. And there are a couple ways to try to extend your tire life, so just turning in a bit more smoothly will help out with extending the tire life of the front tires, being a bit easier on the brakes, being easier getting on the throttle, and adjusting the brake balance. In the race, I still had the brake balance at plus five,
because the last thing that I personally want is for the front tires to wear out because then the Super Formula just becomes really understeery, especially under the dirty air, which will make it a, a really big paint to drive. I mean, it's still a big paint to drive, but at least it's still kind of controllable under these worn tires. So generally speaking, just move the brake balance towards the rear of the car. I had it at plus five, but you can adjust it in case plus five brake balance is too much for you. And especially through here, the front tires, if they're way too worn out, it'll be incredibly difficult to get around through these corners. So that's why I have the brake balance towards the rear of the car. And this will be an issue for both the racing soft and medium stints, as I mentioned. Ooh, almost spun up there. Towards your last two to three laps of your stints, you just want to be careful about how you're driving the car because it just gets really easy to want to spin out, especially at the hairpins. And in terms of when to pit, around halfway into the race, so pitting uh, laps 9, 10, or 11, depending on the tire compound that you're on, is a good time to pit. So for me... I'll say pitting at the end of lap 10, whether you're under racing soft or medium tires, is a pretty good time to pit. If the racing soft tires are wearing out a bit too much for you, or a bit too fast, then you can pit as early as the end of lap 9. Just once again, try to drive as smoothly as possible, being a bit easier on the throttle, your braking, and your turning inputs, because you want to make sure that these tires last at least half of the race each compound, or each stint so you don't end up spinning out because you destroy your tires and if you're within three quarters of a second behind someone you're in the dirty air so you want to drive a bit more carefully you might need to slow yourself down a little bit so you can try to make a turn because if you try to fight the dirty air by turning in a lot more or using a lot more steering input you're only going to end up destroying your tires and that's just going to make your life even more miserable. It's already difficult to overtake here, especially with the dirty air being so powerful here. But earlier we saw that we went through the pit stop and I changed over from the racing soft to the racing medium tires. The pit loss was around 23 to 24 seconds. It'll vary a bit because you have to go through the center S's, the AI car controls that, and depending on the tire compound that you just switched into, the AI car might go through it a bit faster or slower. So the pit loss will vary a bit depending on the tire that you just switched into. And when you start your racing medium stint, especially if this is your second stint, you might actually be able to get faster lap times because you use up so much fuel. So that's something that you want to be aware of, but just do be careful as the stint goes on because once the tire wear starts to kick in, the time drop off can get pretty big and the tire wear can get pretty brutal. So you just want to be careful about how you're driving the car towards the end of your stint once again whether that's the end of your racing soft or medium stint, just drive carefully because the last thing you want to do is go through these hairpins, use just a little too much throttle, and it end up spinning out. And let's go ahead and go towards the end of the race. So you can see that there's already a bit of tire wear kicking in on the racing medium tires and I'm already losing quite a bit of time because the racing medium tires, once they start to wear out, it just makes the car kind of sketchy to drive. And before I forget, I did do this testing without using the overtake except at the very start of the race, just because I wanted to get an idea about what the race pace would look like without the use of the overtake feature. You will be using it in your race and when to use it will basically depend on the situation that you're in. If you're trying to overtake someone, that's when you will use the overtake feature just be aware that you may end up using a bit more fuel, so do take that into account when you're thinking about using the overtake feature. You might need to do a little bit more fuel saving to make up for it. So we're starting the final lap with a bit of extra fuel, 6% of fuel left, and it's going over to the places to overtake as the end of the main straight, really good place to go for a move. You want to try to get the inside line and just try to get ahead of the car that you're trying to overtake 
as the dirty air is a massive pain in the butt to deal with. And this straight over here, also another good place to go for an overtake. And I'll say the last best place to go for a move is through this smaller back straight. But you gotta make it quick because once you go through the twistier parts of the track, it's going to be really difficult to try to go for a move because of how strong the dirty air is. So you're pretty much forced to stay behind someone and the dirty air will kind of just push you back as the dirty air is just really strong, makes the car understeer a lot more. And the last potential place to go for a move is through the final turn. Very situational. You may not see that many moves be done unless if the cars that are engaging in a battle are on different tire compounds. And here we are on the main street. Once again, best place to go for a move, especially with the use of the overtake feature. So at the end of this race, 26 minutes and 18 seconds. So this is kind of a long race, a bit of a brutal one, if I'm going to be honest with you, because you have to do a bit of tire saving and a bit of fuel saving. So it's just a lot of things to juggle around. And the penalty serving zone is hanging out after the Senate S's. So we'll see the penalty serving zone in a moment. You want to try not to get a penalty because you will lose quite a bit of time if you do have to serve a penalty, which is hanging out right here. But anyways, that is pretty much it for this race. Make sure you use both tire compounds. You want to do a bit of fuel saving, mainly by short shifting, and do a bit of tire saving. So just drive as smoothly as possible because this race does have both tire saving and fuel saving involved. So a lot of things to juggle around. This race is not an easy one. so. You just want to try to survive the tire wear and fuel saving shenanigans and hopefully this race goes well for you. So that's pretty much it for me. Apologies if I'm like quiet and stuff because it's really late over here. But anyways, thank you guys for the support. Thank you to Placey for supporting the channel as well. And I'm going to sign off now. So this is Mr. MCA wishing you a good race and I'll see you in the next video.